So I searched the entire internet and I asked every single financial expert I could find on what they suggest you should do as soon as you get paid. And they told me nothing. They didn't respond to my emails because I'm a nobody and they don't know me. So I continued my search until I found the most historically accurate place on earth. TikTok. Most of the videos here said the same thing. You should save for an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses, get your employer 401k match, max out your Roth IRA, create a couple savings buckets for short-term goals like buying a car or buying a house, and if you still have money left over after that, invest in a taxable account. Now there you go, saved you a bunch of time. But what I think is way more interesting is specifically though, how much money should you save by every single age? Starting as early as 20, all the way to 100. Because past 100, you're probably a vampire and you should be giving me advice. But also, have you ever wondered why is every single vampire in every movie super wealthy? There's a reason, because of compound interest. If you've been alive for several hundred years and you haven't become a multi-multi-millionaire, you should probably step into the sun. I'm just kidding. Please don't do that if you're a broke vampire. You still have the rest of your life ahead of you. But actually, here's what's really interesting about saving money. The average American saves only 3.7% and that's by choice because at the height of 2020, people were choosing to save a lot more, closer to 32% of their income. So it is possible and to prove that it's possible, I'm gonna show you and then teach you how to do a magic trick. I promise it'll be worth it. So this is a trick that involves a red deck of cards. This is one of my favorite things to do. Check this out, this is a fan but if you squeeze the cards enough, you can actually squeeze it down into a rosette. That has nothing to do with the trick, I just wanted to show off. This trick actually uses four cards. Now, your job is to memorize as much as you can about these cards. So I'm gonna show you them, and I want you to try to look at them, memorize as much as you can, and the first question I'm gonna ask you is, how many cards am I holding in my hand? If you said, Four, that is 100% correct, I am holding four cards. So one more time, I'm gonna let you see the cards, memorize as much as you can, because question number two is going to be, how many picture cards did you see in this pile? If you said two, the queen of hearts and the king of hearts, you are 100% correct, it was the king of hearts and the queen of hearts. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is a little bit different. I'm gonna add in a card that is different than the rest, and you can obviously see how it's different than the rest. I'm gonna put that in there, shuffle these up, just to trip you up and ask you one more time, which card did I add to the stack? Now, if you said the ace of spades, you are 100% correct. But now the final question is, how many cards on the back were red? Think about it. If you said four red cards and one blue card, you are 100% wrong. In reality, there was only one red card the entire time. There were no switches, there's no hidden midgets up my sleeve, there's no video editing, and there was no sorcery. Now how this trick actually works though is language, patterns, and psychology. The first thing I did was I told you this was a trick using a red deck of cards. And that is true, except I took out all the blue cards with the exception of one red card, but it set you up from the beginning. The second thing I did was I established patterns to reinforce a truth that wasn't really there to begin with. And what I did was I shuffled cards like this and I showed you the back of the same card every single time. So I asked you a question facing the red card towards you and when I shuffled these cards, I made sure that the only red card was facing me towards the back before I asked you a question. The third thing I did was I added another blue card to the already majority of blue cards. And I told you how you can see this one card is different than the rest without explicitly telling you this is the only blue card added to the red cards. You made that assumption. So combining these principles of psychology is how we can trick our brain into saving more money than we think we can and then I'll show you how much money you should save by all the different ages, and hopefully this helps you out more than a TikTok video because you should never take advice from TikTok. Which I realize is ironic coming from a guy who does finance videos and combines them with magic on YouTube, so just ignore all that. At the very least, you learned a pretty cool magic trick, you weasel. So let's get into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay for the magic. Now, if you like psychology, check out my friend Spidey from Behavioral Arts, who is an incredible hypnotist and mentalist, and he did this very same trick in episode nine of Brainchild. Now, this entire strategy of how much money you should save will not be easy, because unlike a magic trick, it involves money, and money involves our own psychology but I like to think that it helps knowing that our brains can be tricked into saving more money than we think. 
But really, if it was that easy, most Americans would be on track to a good retirement, but unfortunately, that's just not the case. Now, most people will have a million reasons why they haven't saved, from inflation to they haven't made enough and they don't have rich parents. Everyone has an excuse. But the point is, you are in control of your own choices and what you do with your own financial journey is totally up to you. But if you chose to watch nerdy finance videos like this on YouTube, the truth is you're probably way ahead of most people, so let's begin. By age 18, you need to have an LLC that you live inside of that's paid off, that's making 100 grand a year, which you'll leverage into commercial real estate property that'll make you $10 million a year in passive income. If you're not doing that, what are you doing with your life right now? In reality, at age 18, you should have zero dollars saved. No one expects you to have any money saved, but at the very least, you should open yourself an IRA. Most experts recommend a Roth IRA and a traditional 401k, but really, at age 18, you're just getting started. Now, the next age bracket is 30 years old. Now, Fidelity says that by 30 years old, you should save at least whatever you're making per year at your job. So if your annual salary is $60,000 a year, when you turn 30, you should have saved at least $60,000. Now, when I say saved, everything counts. Your IRAs, your 401ks, your taxable brokerage accounts, even equity in your house, and even NFTs. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. After 30 though, things really start to ramp up fast because of compound interest. The recommended amount saved by age 35 jumps to twice your annual income. By age 40, it becomes three times your annual income. By age 45, it's four times your annual income, and by age 50, it's six times, not five, tripped you up. The presumption is as you approach the 50 year old mark, you're probably earning higher than you were when you were 30. And because you're making more, you're probably saving more and compound interest is doing the heavy lifting. Now by age 55, the recommended saved amount is seven times what you make per year. By age 60, it goes up to eight times what you make per year. And by 67, which is the full retirement age, you should have saved at least 10 times what you made per year. So for someone who's making $60,000 a year at age 67, they should have saved at least $600,000. Now the assumption is you are contributing 15% of your income towards investing throughout your entire career and that you start investing when you were 25. And out of that 15% that you saved, it assumes that more than half of that goes towards the stock market, the S&P 500, and that your spending is the same in retirement as it was when you were working. So that's a lot of assumptions, but just keep all of that in mind. Now, besides Fidelity, I went way deeper and I wanted to get the expert opinion of money gurus like Dave Ramsey. Yeah, what? He doesn't talk like that, but I like to think he does. He does recommend though to start investing at age 25 and to save at least 15% of your income as well. Now for a person who's making 50K a year, 15% represents $7,500 a year or $625 a month, which he says after 30 years from age 25, you should have a million dollars by age 55, which is really good. That's already 26 times your annual income. And if you keep going past that point, investing for 40 years will leave you with 3.6 $6 million. Now, Mr. Ramsey also acknowledges that not everyone will start investing by age 25, but if that's the case, you'll just have to invest more money to make up for the lost time. Like for example, if you start investing at age 45, you'll have to invest roughly $800 a month for 25 years until the age of 70 before you reach a million dollars. Next up, I wanted to get advice from Ramit Sethi, who's another guy I follow, and his template is very different from everybody else, but it's also one of my favorites. My philosophy philosophy is to spend extravagantly on the things you love, but cut costs mercilessly on the things you don't. It's also a psychological trick because he says to find out and figure out your rich life first. What is it that you like to spend money on the most from the top 10 most popular categories? Magic tricks, Pokemon cards, NFTs, and Bitcoin. <laughs> Andre's pumping Bitcoin again. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's convenience, travel, health and fitness, experiences, freedom, relationships, generosity, luxury, social status, or self-improvement. He doesn't really break it down by age. Instead, he gives us four dials that we can twist. What is this? Anyway, I imagine it's like a dial. It's one that you twist up. If you do that to one, you have to twist the other down equally as much. It's like in a game, you know, when you level up, you get attribute points, you gotta distribute them. It's like that, but with money. So 
it's nothing like that. So the four dials are fixed costs, which are things like rent and car payments, which should be 50 to 60% of your money. The next dial is savings, which he allocates five to 10% to, then investments 10% and 20 to 35% toward guilt-free spending. Now, if you're still paying attention at this point and I didn't put you to sleep, you'll notice that between saving and investing, if you add them up, that's 15% across the board. Overall, what I personally learned from making this video is that every expert recommends that you at least aim to save 15% of your income and contribute it towards a 401k or an IRA, a tax efficient account. If you can do that starting in your mid 20s, you'll be the textbook shining example of what's possible with compound interest. But if you start later in life, you'll just need to make up for the difference and contribute a little more. But I also learned that the good news is if you've paid off your house and you have less expenses in retirement and you don't keep up with the Jones, you'll need a lot less money. Now, the last money expert I wanna show you is the one that really made me think of the magic trick that I showed you, and that is Sam from Financial Samurai. His entire thing is to make as much money as you can, but then trick yourself into thinking that you make less than you actually do. And I think for most people, they would say that he's probably on the extreme end of money experts, and that's because if Fidelity is Coast Fi, then Fat Fire is the Samurai. Don't worry if that made no sense, that's a Reddit reference, but if it did make sense, you're an ultra nerd and I don't know why you're watching this video. He says to immediately set your 401k slider to 10%, just start right there. And then every single month, crank it up by 1% until it hurts. The goal is getting it to 35%. And once the dollar amount spills over the 401k yearly limit, which for 2024 is $23,000, then prioritize the IRA. But once you've filled up both accounts, if there's still money left over, contribute another 10 to 35% into taxable brokerage accounts. As you can see, he really likes to save until it hurts. And he says the most important thing to figure out as step one is how much money you've saved versus how much money you're spending. Because the relationship between the two is what he calls the expense coverage ratio. So for example, if I saved $100,000 and it cost me $25,000 a year to live my best rich life, that's an expense coverage ratio of four. That's savings divided by the annual spending. The goal is to get as high of a number at the expense coverage ratio as possible the closer we get to retirement. Now, Sam shows a chart that's gonna look confusing, but I promise I'll break it down, it's actually really easy. He shows a hypothetical income of $65,000 a year. The key to pay attention here is not the income column. This side doesn't matter. This is just an example. But what he really wants you to look at is this column, the expense coverage ratio. Because regardless of your income, that's how much you should save by all the different ages. So here's an example. At age 30, if you make 65,000 a year, you'd multiply your income by the expense coverage ratio. So multiplying 65,000 by 0.5 or 1.5, you'd get a range between $32,500 and $97,500 needed to be saved. Now at age 40, you'd do the same. Multiply your income, which is 65,000 in this case, by three to six, and that gives you a range of $195 to $390,000 saved. Now age 50, as an example, you'd multiply by six to 10 times coverage. So 65,000, multiplied by that is 390 to 650,000 needed to be saved, and so on and so forth. Hopefully you get the idea of how to use that chart. Also, when it says how much money you should save, remember that includes your entire net worth. So whatever you wanna include into that. For most people, that's their 401k, their IRA, and of course their home equity as well. I also learned that if you reach a net worth of one to $10 million, you should buy a farm. Unfortunately, I didn't get an explanation. And finally, I've learned if you subscribe and smash the like button, I'll keep on uploading and teaching you random magic tricks along the way. As always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab your free stocks. Links are down below and then go track them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below on my Patreon. Love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'd love to see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. See you soon. Bye-bye.